Magnus has traveled his world in search of clues to help him save his friends from the corrupt nether realm. His search for knowledge has taken him from the sulfurous sea to the ocean, from the planetoids to the underworld, and everywhere in between. Along the way, he has collected, studied, and cataloged books and magical tomes enough to fill the vast libraries of his tower. However, even after all of this, he was still unable to learn how to break the spell that keeps his friends bound. The only place Magnus knew of that was left to explore was an ancient jungle temple. Perhaps the civilization that built it had an understanding of magic and left a record of it in the temple. It was time for some archaeology. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Magnus the Mage Calamity Let's Play. We are doing death mode and only the mage class. We've got lots of cool stuff ahead of us today. So let's start by crafting some summons for Astrum Arius. Last episode, we got this awesome spell and I think it's going to do such good damage against Arius. It's called the Keel Hole. We were able to get the Keel Hall because we defeated Leviathan. And after we do that, we're able to unlock a drop from one of the enemies in the dungeon. The summon for Astrum Arius can be crafted from Stardust and Fallen Stars. So let's just craft a few of those. In between episodes, I set up a simple wooden platform that goes over the astral biome. I think we are ready to go. Let's summon Arius. Um, <laughs> I think we need to be in night. So let's switch this over to night. And now let's summon Arius. Ooh, someone's right on top of us. Okay, let's get this fight going. Yeah, I think this is going to do so well. Because these stack. Yeah, we already have Arius down to 85%. Now we just need to keep dodging. And get our mana back. Get that adrenaline. Yeah, this is so effective. Okay, sometimes I need to just stop shooting so I can focus on dodging because there are so many things to dodge during this fight. This thing really chews up mana. Whoa, is this a new song? It seems like pretty cool. I don't remember this song being this cool. Okay, that's our first heal, but we need to pop heals. Ooh, couldn't escape that one. Okay, time to dodge. This part gets crazy. Okay, 21 seconds until our next heal. Oh no. This is so crazy. Seven seconds. Two seconds. Just keep dashing, Rito. Can Magnus do it? Can we get a first try clear on Astrum Arius? I don't know. I think we've almost got him. Oh man, this is getting so close. Yes, we did it. We did it. Oh, now we can't die on these. No, dodge. 
we got Astrum Arius first try. That's actually a pretty dang hard boss fight, so I'm really happy about that. So this lore piece says you gain jump speed in space, so I'm definitely gonna keep that. Now, let's see what this treasure bag got us. Ooh, we have a starlight fuel cell. This permanently makes adrenaline mode take 10 less seconds to charge. That is so good. And we also have a summon, the slow Borealis bomber. That's kind of fun. It has one of those little things that get summoned in the fight. We have the Gravistar Sabaton, and it says press the down key to fall quickly. Ooh, that's cool. It has an eight second cooldown, but you just push down and you fall quickly, and then when you hit the ground, you explode. That's actually really neat. I don't think it's going to be worth switching off some of our other accessories for it, but still quite a cool idea. The main thing that we were getting is the Aria cells, though, because we can craft the Miracle Fruit, and that will be a health upgrade. So let's do that right now. In order to craft the Miracle Fruit, we need some more life shards, and I think we can just head right over to the jungle because I want to go there for the golem fight anyways. And I'm sure we'll find a few plantera spawns as we go into the jungle. We got a plantera spawn right away. Excellent. Let's see where it... Okay, plantera's over there. I don't want to get too far away from plantera. Come on, Plantera, you can do it. Come into our arena. Okay, let's try the Keel Hall on Plantera. Ooh, <laughs> yes. Take that, Plantera. There we go. So that should give us enough living shards to go back to base and craft that health upgrade. We can craft the Miracle Fruit. It requires Life Fruit. Aria Cells, Living Shards, and Stardust. That bumps our health up by 25 and turns all of these hearts a pretty light green color. Okay, back to the jungle, and now we need to go find the entrance to the jungle temple. So I think it might be right here, or it might be on this side. So let's go check. Sweet, I think we found the entrance. It's kind of overgrown over here, so we gotta break through the dirt, and here we go. And we use our little key, open this up. I always enjoy exploring this temple. Here is the important moment. We're going to see what the RNG has given us. And this seems like a pretty good sized room. <laughs> There's a Plantera bulb in a house over there. That's kind of funny. I don't think I've ever seen a Plantera bulb spawn like that. Okay, let's break some of this stuff up and get this arena set up. And I definitely want to break these spikes up here. So I added them to Vein Miner, so it's easier to break them. Here's our arena. It's not the best. Maybe we will bother with a fireplace. Let's put that down. Because I've heard this fight can actually be pretty hard. Let's try this fight first with the Keel Hall and see how that goes. And then we can try switching over to Maybe the Terra Ray. Golem usually isn't too hard, but I know he's been buffed a lot. And so this could get pretty tricky, especially when the head comes off, because that phase is so crazy.
Okay, I think we're gonna need Terror Ray for this. Ooh, yeah, this is insane. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is even happening? We just need to kill his head and then we're good. was crazy. <laughs> and now we're good to go. Whew. <laughs> that was a lot more scary than I thought it was going to be. And we got the Pixar. Oh yeah. That was such a fun fight. Let's head back to base and see what we got. We got the shiny stone, which increases life regen when not moving. And we got the mythical heat ray. Ooh, I actually like this weapon. The lore for Golem says, place in your inventory to gain increased defense while standing still. And it looks like it gives us 10 extra defense when we stand still. And it's pretty almost immediate that it does that. That's kind of an interesting one. I don't know how often I stand still in fights where I need extra defense. Now that we've defeated Golem, there's a few more things we can do. Let's quickly open up our boss checklist and let's see where we're at. We've got the Martian Madness and we've got Plaguebringer Goliath, Betsy, Duke Fishron, the Ravager, and the Lunar Events, Astrum Dias, and Moon Lord. So lots of really good stuff at the end of hard mode here. The first thing I want to do though is upgrade from our Reaver armor. Now that we have the Pixaw, we can actually go mine up Scoria. So let's go do that. And we should be able to get that pretty quickly here. And we've got lots of improved gear for the abyss so let's put all that stuff on so on the map it's this red material right here and it's the stuff that kind of drops the fire embers so it's actually all over the abyss whoa what's this that's so cool it's like little vines little kelp Now that we have our abyssal diving gear, we actually have the ability to swim, which is why I was able to take off my wings down here. And we're not even getting breath loss, and we're pretty far down. I'm not sure how much scoria we need, but I'm just gonna grab a whole bunch because it's so easy to mine up. And then we might even be able to craft a new spell with it, which will probably be pretty powerful. We still haven't even started losing breath in the abyss yet. Man, this abyssal diving gear is so good. Ooh, the sounds changed. So I think we have reached the scary layer of the abyss. Yeah, we did. Um, I think I'm gonna leave the scary layer. <laughs> no! <laughs> okay. That was scary. I'm out of there. <laughs> We've got 410 Scoria, and I think that is just enough. Scoria used to be Chaos Ore, I believe, and the bars look different now after the 1.4.4 update. Five will turn into one bar, so let's go ahead and just convert all of these. That gives us 82 bars, and now we can craft a bunch of cool stuff. We can do the Hadel Mantle, which is a new wing set. And now we can craft our armor set. So there's the armor piece and there's the helmet. And here are the legs. With living fire blocks and scoria bars, we can actually craft a new spell. It's called Forbidden Sun. And let's see what it does. Ooh, that's pretty sweet. It kind of reminds me of the SHPC, honestly. 
the sigil of calamitous so it looks like it's a magic accessory that's really powerful it's an upgrade to the celestial cuffs the sorcerer emblem and then we need all of this stuff over here and i think we've got pretty much everything so let's see how to evil water we just need corrupt seeds bottled water and uh, corrupt sand so let's start crafting up some of that i think all we need now is some corrupt sand. I don't think I actually have any of that in my inventory, but I know where we can find some. Okay, here's our corrupt sand. And I think that's probably enough. And there we go, we can craft our unholy water now. The first thing we need to craft is the chaos amulet, which has the spelunker effect and increases life regen. And that just requires essence of chaos and spelunker potions. So here we go. So I've got all of the ingredients we need for the recipe right here. We've already been upgrading our celestial cuffs for a while because I knew we would need them, but I didn't actually feel like using them. Now that we can craft the Sigil of Calamitous, it'll actually be pretty nice to have increased pickup range for mana stars. And it restores mana when we get damaged. There's a 10% magic damage increase, 10% decrease in magic usage, and 100 plus max mana. And it reveals treasure locations if visibility is on. So I think it'll be a good one to switch out for our ambrosial accessory. Now let's do an improved dummy and see what these weapons do. Let's check our heat ray first. Oh man, this stinks. <laughs> it can't even do over a thousand. Okay, well, we're definitely tossing that. And then now let's try our forbidden sun. Ooh, this is pretty good. It's like 3000. I also want to try the SHPC and see because I don't think I don't think it scales anymore with bosses. So this is actually not as powerful as this Scoria Forbidden Sun spell. So I think it's time to finally uh, put away our SHPC. And now let's take a look at the difference between Reaver armor and the Hydrothermic armor. So our defense is currently 71, and let's put on this. Our defense went up by three, and let's see what our offense does. So we're at 221, and now we're at 217. Our offense went down just a little bit, but let's see what the effects are. So it says it does increase in magic damage, reduce mana usage, crit strike chance for mana, pretty standard. And then it does 100 plus max mana, temporary immunity to lava, immunity to fire damage, provides heat protection in death mode. The set bonus increases magic damage, and it does an inferno effect when below 50% health. Magic attacks summon damaging and healing flare orbs on hit. Interesting. You also have a 20% chance to emit a blazing explosion when you are hit. And this is what the armor set looks like. It kind of looks a little bit weird. <laughs> it looks like my character's head turned into like a little torch or a candle or something. I do like it's kind of got the fun effect of like the smoke coming off of you. I think the other helmets look a lot cooler than this one though. The wings add 10% damage while wearing hydrothermic armor. So actually, if we put these wings on, now our damage has actually gone up. So our, our defense and damage goes up, and I think there is some self-heal. I want to find the barkeep, and let's buy some Eternia crystals from him. It's also kind of interesting, they've added these exclamation points above NPCs' heads when they start selling stuff. So you can kind of see which ones have things for you. Oh, and here's the drunk princess. I think I'm going to go ahead and buy some stuff from her. I just bought 30 Tequila Sunrise, and what that does is it boosts damage, damage reduction, and knockback by 7%, crit strike chance by 3, and gives you 15 defense during the day. And then it reduces life regen by 1. The Moscow Mule, that boosts damage and knockback by 9%, critical strike chance by 3%, and it reduces life regen by 2. So those are really pretty good and they don't hurt you too bad. I'm just clearing this out just a tad so it'll be a bit flatter for when we do the next fight. Maybe clear this off. And that's probably good. Okay, well let's get the Eternia event started. 
Man, hearing the music from Dungeon Defenders really makes me want to play that game again. It was a free game on Games with Gold with Xbox uh, years ago, and I had such a good time with that game. I'll throw Wrath of the Ancients over there, and yeah. Ooh, what are these? Are these new? I'm not used to these little bugs. Usually they're wyverns. I don't know if this got updated in the Calamity mod to have new, more difficult enemies or something. Ooh, I wonder if this keel hole will be pretty good for this. It seems like it could hold these guys back pretty well. I do like the Wrath of the Ancients, which seems to almost completely hold back enemies on one side. It looks like we got a Dark Mage somewhere. I'm not sure what side that's on. Oh, we got him on the left side. We might have another Dark Mage on this side too. Yeah, the keel hall is really good because it's almost like a sentry. We throw it down and then they walk right into it. Ooh, we got a fire bow. Nice. And we'll throw another one of these. The dark mage just got completely wrecked over there. I think I'll throw some of these down by our by our base. Okay, I think we're gonna be pretty good for this wave, and next wave is gonna be insane. We're gonna have Betsy. I think she'll spawn right off the bat, and then we have to still fight off everybody. Okay, let's get Terra Ray going and see how much we can do against Betsy. Looks like our damage is pretty good. We'll go with Rage and just try to DPS her as fast as possible. Okay, let's get these mobs taken care of a little bit. The hardest thing is trying to keep our crystal from exploding. Um, I think Betsy's just going crazy on our crystal, so if we just keep these spells up, it should keep her getting hurt. There we go, we got her. And... I think we're good to go. Man, I am really surprised with how much utility I've gotten out of this keel hole spell. We got this really cool bow, and we have Betsy wings, which I don't think our Betsy wings are really worth much to us. They're pretty slow, I think. So it looks like Betsy's treasure bag costs 3 platinum and 50 gold. And now that we've defeated her, we could try to get that legendary weapon she drops, but I'm kind of thinking that we're pretty strong with the stuff we've got already, and I don't really want to farm up that particular event because it takes like 10 minutes to go through the event, maybe a little bit less, but it takes a while because you can't just fight the boss directly. The only other option would be to farm up enough gold to buy treasure bags and that would be you know it's a one percent drop rate so that could be upwards of 350 platinum that i would need to farm up and that doesn't sound <laughs> super appealing maybe if we get stuck and we want to try a different weapon or something but i don't think we're going to have trouble with the next bosses for the most part like plague bringer Actually, Plaguebringer might actually be pretty hard, but I think the weapons we got will do pretty well against Plaguebringer. I think this is a great spot to end the episode for today. We've defeated so many bosses. We beat Astrum Arius, we beat the Golem, and we even beat Betsy and the Dungeon Defender event. Oh, before we go though, we can use our Dungeon Defender medals.
This guy sells the Defender Forge for 75. And the Defender Forge can combine into a mobile Defender Forge with Souls of Fright, Night, and Light. So let's do that. There we go, mobile Defender Forge. And let me just show you what that is. It's a Louis AFK item, and it creates a mobile Defender Forge, just like it sounds. And it makes the little pig sound. And we can combine this with our pig safe merchant that we've been using so much, and it will create the final version and the best storage option. And that is right there, the mobile all-in-one chest and merchant. So now it summons the Defender Forge below us, our safe to the right, the pig to the left, and a fairy merchant above us. It's been such a good time. We <laughs> were pretty close on both of those boss fights. They were tricky, the Astrum Arius and the Golem boss fights. Uh, the Betsy boss fight wasn't as tricky because the keel hull and our rage that we activated really made that fight work quite well for us. And we will have plenty of awesome things to do next episode as well. So if you've enjoyed this series so far, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes when I release them. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.